it's time for another cheap camera challenge and today we have something very special this is the Nikon D70 at this point I'm not afraid to say that I am addicted to buying these cheap cameras and trying them out just to see what they're still capable of and this little guy well not so little guy came out in 2004 it was available for thousand dollars and today I was able to buy this camera plus this lens the Nikon 18 to 70 3.5 to 4.5 G lens all together for about 85 US dollars now what is this camera like to use well we're going to find out we're going to talk about the good the bad and as usual we're going to be looking at some sample photos I only took 44 photos yes when I bought this camera it conveniently came with this 256 megabyte compact flash card and just to keep things authentic I decided to only limit myself uh, to 256 megabytes and I'm gonna be shooting in raw okay so just to give you guys an idea that's 44 photos I did the math okay 44 photos fit on this card if you shoot raw with this 6 megapixel camera now when you put the card in it will show that you can only take 23 photos this is just Nikon being very conservative in reality you can take 44 trust me I know it's pretty fun to go out there and be limited to 44 photos you have to take your time and then every so often you have to sit down and review your photos and delete the ones that didn't make the cut so first of all what's good about this camera well this camera has some interesting history behind it yes you know we're getting old when we're talking about history of these DSLRs now in 2003 Canon released their famous 300D the original digital rebel and Nikon really needed to respond and everyone was waiting to see what Nikon would do would they step up how would they react and so on and so forth well Nikon surprised everyone when they released the D70 because they proved that yes the DSLR revolution is here but no uh, we don't need to artificially cripple a camera too much we're not afraid to release a camera with great features and professional design to the masses and so for many many people the d70 was their first digital camera even if it wasn't their first camera it might have been their first DSLR so I have to be very careful uh, in what I say because I know there's a lot of nostalgia associated with the d70 and the d70s which came shortly after one of my favorite things about this camera is just how comfortable it is to hold. I was not expecting this level of ergonomics. It doesn't need any additional grips or extenders or anything like that. Okay, and even though it's a prosumer uh, DSLR, it still has a lot of the features available on Nikon's professional cameras. For example, uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of little things. So, <laughs> I mean, you have a full uh, control dial here. We can e easily select uh, if you want scene modes, or if you want uh, program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, or manual mode, I tend to shoot these cameras in uh, aperture priority. You have a hot shoe. Uh, you have easy buttons to select your metering, right? This one that's all filled in is matrix metering. That's the one I tend to use. Uh, you have easy exposure compensation button here. Two control wheels, guys, two control wheels, okay? One here, one here, one to control aperture, one to control shutter speed. A little light here, which helps at night. Uh, auto exposure lock button which can be set to back button focus which is what I use a convenient bracket button here for bracketing exposure bracketing a drive mode selector here where you can choose between single shot continuous shooting timed shooting timed remote shooting and everything else you might need for example ISO white balance and the quality level can easily be selected on the fly for example I hold down ISO and move this control wheel here and select ISO which goes from 200 to 1600 on this camera okay so you have access to full manual controls it's a lot of little things too like for example the strap eyelet here to put a camera strap on you see how it's angled ever so slightly upwards uh, just so it doesn't dig into your hand Nikon put a lot of thought into this camera before releasing it it doesn't look cheap or flimsy it's very solid solid feeling nothing rattles nothing shakes it's got decent battery life about 400 shots and here's the thing it auto focuses with Nikon's AFD lenses okay it has the little screwdriver motor here so you can use Nikon's older AFD lenses on this camera without a problem now even though the sensor is only 6.1 megapixels it is a CCD sensor which does have some interesting properties and I think a lot of people are still attracted uh, by the unique colors and rendition that you get with these older CCD sensors I think it's also a testament to the build quality of this camera 
I mean, this camera is from 2004. It still looks, shoots, and feels like it's brand new. It's been many years, and it shows no signs of slowing down. We have to mention it has a top LCD screen. It's, it's very easy to spend a lot of money on a camera today and not get a top LCD screen. And here you get a very convenient uh, top LCD screen. The only issue I believe with this LCD screen is it doesn't display the ISO uh, right on the screen. So you either have to remember what it was set to uh, or just press the ISO button and, and recall what it is. Uh, the shutter speed goes to one over eight thousands of a second. Now, not something you should take for granted. Okay, so many professional level features, very thought out design, ergonomic. Some of you might not like the weight of this camera. I like the weight, uh, but it's 680 grams. That's one and a half pounds. This is a chunky camera. D3400 is considerably smaller on every dimension. Okay, it's a lot lighter as well. So if you're used to today's entry level DSLR, I mean, this thing is positively, it feels like a toy, really, honestly, when you compare it to something like this. It has a tiny viewfinder, okay? So if you're used to full frame viewfinders, uh, you might be disappointed by this tiny viewfinder, but if you start shooting with it all day long, you, you quickly get used to it. The continuous shooting, okay, so just to demonstrate to you guys what three FPS looks like. Okay, and the buffer is four images if you're shooting in RAW. It just takes a longer time to store things to the card. This is not a fast camera. This is not a camera that you use for, uh, you know, again, performance mode. This is not a camera that you use for sports action, that kind of thing. Continuous autofocus I found was a bit slow, certainly slow by today's standards. Uh, you have to go to menu while you're shooting and then select autofocus mode, select autofocus continuous instead of autofocus single. Okay, but that's pretty tedious to do. For example, if you see something moving across the frame uh, really quickly, this combination of going into the menu and selecting autofocus continuous uh, is not something I want to be doing on a regular basis. Uh, image quality at higher ISOs is not great. Okay, to put it bluntly. So this is a camera that I use either at 200 or up to 400 ISO. So 200 if it's sunny, 400 if it's cloudy. Just if you pretend that this is a film camera, uh, you will have a great time. Even though this is a rugged camera, it's not weather sealed. Okay, Nikon does not state that it's environmentally sealed for dust and moisture, so be careful. And as we mentioned, the sensor is about six megapixels, which definitely limits the amount of cropping potential. Six megapixels is still plenty for Instagram, uh, but if you plan to crop heavily, uh, you might want to look into a higher megapixel count camera. And lastly, something, this is just what I found, guys, the auto white balance setting. I found was a little inaccurate and I found I had to do more white balance adjustments after the fact than I usually have to do with Nikon cameras. Uh, it might make more sense to preset a Kelvin setting or uh, to choose one of the pre-made white balance modes. It has only five autofocus points. And finally, this is an older camera, guys. So there is no live view, there is no video. And look at this tiny LCD screen. Now you can cycle between uh, information and there's even a convenient histogram available. Now, Nikon did bundle this camera with this little LCD screen protector to protect this glorious 130,000 pixel uh, LCD. And that was nice of them. I think uh, these days companies would charge $24.95 uh, for a piece of plastic like this. Okay, not off to a good start here. Looks like the compact flash card in the camera has some bad sectors. So my first shot of the day ended up like this, unfortunately. I do not have a Lightroom preset to recreate a corrupted memory card, uh, but this actually might be the coolest shot of the Toronto City Hall that I'll ever take. Uh, let's just pump up the contrast because, well, it's already pretty cool. Okay, so that's one shot down, 43 to go. Next, I tried to capture the beauty of this ugly, brutalist building. Some perspective corrections were applied here. The images lent themselves very well to black and white conversion. I don't know if it's the CCD sensor in this camera, but it produces a very filmic look uh, just simply by converting it to black and white. So this was pretty cool. Here, I don't recommend this combination for any bird faster than a pigeon, uh, but here you can see some of the bokeh, which you know is not too inspiring. This sadly might be the nicest picture I've taken of a seagull, or as I like to call them, rats of the sky. Uh, nothing, no amount of editing or shadow recovery could have saved this horrible picture of Winston Churchill's statue to the backdrop of the brutalist city hall. A tight crop of a moving elevator at a construction site. 
Again, more of the city hall looks kind of cool. You may recognize this building because it's featured in a lot of American sci-fi shows now. They're filming a lot of TV shows up in Toronto because it saves money. A building in the middle is often seen as some kind of futuristic headquarters. These two gentlemen are clearly out of the Andrei Tarkovsky cinematic universe. A couple of stalkers going shopping near a strange lake. Here is a wedding, a sign of great things to come. Here you can see how I set up a shot I wanted to take. Here I got a shot I was relatively happy with. You can see sometimes the uh, f-stop and the shutter speeds uh, don't entirely make too much sense. This is because I was uh, running and gunning the whole time. Uh, they're not necessarily optimal as long as I was happy with the output and the depth of field uh, you know I just moved on everything was taken at base ISO so I wasn't too concerned you have to take an obligatory picture of the CN Tower this image had another image within it this is where it would have been nicer to have more megapixels uh, because this crop uh, was very interesting and I wanted to get a little more uh, detail from the street scene I really enjoy taking street scenes at longer focal lengths uh, so it would have been nicer to have a couple extra megapixels here. Picture of a tree. This lens performs best at around f5.6 to f8. Although, to be honest, guys, uh, it's not a huge deal uh, unless you're really, really pixel peeping. The lens performed just fine, uh, in my opinion, even wide open. Here, obviously, perspective corrections were uh, applied, maybe a little too aggressive. Yeah, had a lot of fun with this. Not sure why I took a picture of that. That's one of the 44 shots wasted. More fun with this thing, a self-portrait. This is a kind of picture that will really push uh, the D70 to its limits because the D70 has limited dynamic range compared to uh, cameras today. And I was able to get about a stop of decent shadow recovery uh, from the raw files in the D70. I thought when I went on this walk that more of my images would be at 18 millimeters or the widest end of the range, but it ended up being that very few of them were. Here, this was one of these happy accidents. Uh, this is an image that I don't think works, no matter how much I want it to work, but, you know, only 44 shots, so here it is. There's way too much going on here, and the eye doesn't know where to go, and these pillars are distracting, and the balance is all off. Clouds, you gotta have a cloud photo. Clouds are fun. They don't take up too much space on the memory card. One over thirteenth of a second. Tried to hold the camera really, really still, even without image stabilization uh, the image came out pretty sharp this CCD sensor produces really gorgeous colors and I found that I had to do very little color correction now, I did have to do a lot of white balance correction as I mentioned earlier but in terms of colors uh, once the white balance was uh, correct the colors just pop here's a first image taken uh, when the Sun was setting at ISO 800 I was trying to demonstrate foreground background layering uh, but see, once the ISO goes to 800 and above, detail starts breaking down. Way too much noise in the image already. Uh, you know, even with noise reduction and stuff like that, you're really going to be torturing yourself uh, shooting this camera at 800 or above. Obligatory CN Tower at higher ISOs. Alrighty. Again, black and white conversions were really fun. And we end the day with a nice long exposure shot on a tripod. Let's apply uh, some cheesy hue saturation luminance adjustments uh, to make it more fit for Instagram. If you guys are looking for a cheap camera to learn photography, maybe a camera to give to your kids or a camera to just throw into your travel bag and not have to worry about it getting damaged, scratched or something like that, I think this is still a perfect camera. There are many of them floating around uh, on the used market going for next to nothing okay and this was just an absolute joy to shoot so if you have experience with the d70 and i know some of you do because a lot of people started out with this dslr let us know in the comment section and as always guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more